Okay, here we are recording. Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Positive. Um, if you found this video and you're like, what is it? Well, let me quickly explain. I do videos Monday through Sunday, anywhere from 10 minutes to 20 minutes long, and of some kind of religious content. Currently, we are reading through a book called New Morning Mercies, a daily gospel devotional, and the author's name, of course, is Paul David Tripp, um, as you can see on the screen here. Um, that's my passion, and that's what I like to do, and some of you enjoy it, and some of you give a comment or two, and that really pleases me. So if you're new to this channel and you're wondering what it is, and um, you want to give it a try, take a listen and see what you think. In the meantime, let's get started. All right, everyone, we are going to read um, this passage today. Um, it's going to be very quick, but some days are have to be. Some days don't have to stretch to be too long. I'm not going to try to over talk, um, just to over talk, just to get uh, airtime on my videos. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a real quick one, I think. Now, if it's naturally long, great. Well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah. According to this book, it is very short. Anyway, let's get it going. March fourth, two thousand twenty-one. If you don't acknowledge sin, you won't value grace. If you don't value grace, you won't seek the forgiveness and rescue it provides. Isn't that so true? I will make this confession, although it hurts to do so. I am a very skilled self-swindler. I am very good at playing monkey games with my morality. All too often I argue for righteousness that simply is not there. It's too easy for me to convince myself that the wrong that I have done is not so wrong after all. As I work to minimize the gravity of my condition, I turn to devalue the grace that is my only hope of rescue. Transformation, deliverance, Lord, please crush my heart with the guilt of my sin. So that you may lift, fill it once again with the glory of your redeeming grace. For further study and encouragement, we're going to read Psalms 38. All right, let's go right there. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. For your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There is no sounded in my flesh because of your anger nor any health of in my bones because of my sin for the iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden they are too heavy for me my wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness i am troubled i am bowed down guilt greatly i go mourning all the day long for my loins are full of inflammation and there is no sound in soundness in my flesh. I am feebly and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Lord, all of my desires is before you. All my sin sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pants. My strength fails me as for the light of my eyes it also has gone from me my loved ones and f my friends stand aloof from my plague and my relatives stand afar off those also who seek my life sneer for me those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan for my deception all the day long but, but I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus I am like a man who does not hear, and in those mouths is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope you will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, Hear me, lest, my, lest they rejoice over me when my foot slips they exalt themselves against me for I am ready to fail and my sorrow is continually before me for I will declare my inequity I will be in anguish over my sin but 
my enemies are vigorous and they are strong, and those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those who have render evil for good, they are my adversaries because I follow what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. All right, so let's read a little bit about what Psalms 18 says in the footnotes here. 38, 1 through 21. According to the Psalms title, prayer brings man to God's root remembrance. The words not only imply forgetfulness, but the but the bringing to mind deci- uh, decisive action will be taken on behalf of someone. 38, 3 through 8. Not all sickness is the result of sin, but sometimes it is. 1 Corinthians 11.30 The exact nature of David's illness is unknown, but it is severe. 38.13.14 David prefers to let God answer his friends who have ostracized him and his enemies who have tried to take advantage of his suffering. 38.16 Instead of restoring the penitent sinner, acquaintances often turn against him, forgetting they too are not immune to failure. 39 title. This psalm was... Oh, that... Okay, we're reading 39. Sin is real. Sin is deep. Sin can hurt you. Sin can be harmful. If you know God and you sin... Repent right away. It's very important. It's very needed. Um, Psalm 38 has been perfect um, for me, as well as it reminds me of my community that I follow in YouTube, that um, there's wrong on both sides, there's sin on both sides, but it's a game of cat and mouse with uh, Diane's channel. Um, It's a game of... um, the uh, the boy who called or the boy who called cried wolf with uh, Wendy and Randy um, because they're in a world of hurt right now. I I do believe Wendy is truly hurting. I really believe that Wendy is trying to process. I really truly believe Wendy is trying to do her best. But she has cried wolf way too many times. So a lot of people are angry. A lot of people are going to go after her. A lot of people are going to do crazy stuff. I pray for Wendy in this in this circumstance that she will hang in there, hang strong. Uh, don't go overboard and do what you need to do. Um, But you did cry wolf way too many times. Defended the devil. That the devil's actions that were flowing in Diane's body. Diane's not the devil. But the devil was in her. The devil might still be in her. Right? She might need an exorcism to be, you know, semi-humorous. Randy, she might be getting there. She is slower, but she isn't there yet. She has a lot of anger. She has a lot of, well, if I'm, if you're going to hold me to the fire, then you need to hold everyone else's past to the fire. That needs to stop, in my opinion. Randy really just needs to say, no, you're right. Hold me to the fire So what about the rest? Dealing with the moment is what Randy needs to do. Instead of saying, hold others to the fire. We already have held everyone else to the fire. We don't need to bring up 60 years worth of crud or, okay, let's be literal here, but we don't need to bring up the last three years of everyone's nightmare 
right now, right here, we're dealing with what's going on in your life, Randy. I plead you to understand that. You've got to understand and truly believe that we are holding you to the fire and you need to accept what's going on and that's it. End of subject. End of sentence. End of statement. Instead of fighting back saying, well, others need to. Others did. Do you not get that? Do you not understand that? Do you not believe that? Others did get their feet held to the fire. Their transgressions are past. Just like you, some people are still going to love you. Just like others, people are going to love them. You have to believe that that is how it is. Your gripe is, well, people still believe in so-and-so. And that kills you, doesn't it? Well, think of it in your, in your camp. People still believe in you, Randy. People still believe in you. We're not going to turn their heads. We're not going to change their minds. But the mass majority want you to get it. Mass majority want you to understand what happened. Mass majority want to know why it took over a month for you to realize it. Instead of you coming back with, well, if you're going to hold me to the fire, then you need to hold so-and-so to the fire. When their fire holding feet were already done. So what if some still don't believe it? The matter of the fact is their feet were held to the fire when it happened back then for them, whomever you might be speaking of. It's your turn to relax. It's your turn to breathe through. It's your turn to be strong like Wendy had been. Strong. She held to the fire. She didn't necessarily lash out and say, well, others need to. And if she did, she didn't say it in the same breath. Right? You and I are not copacetic together. You and I are not friendly together. And that's okay. But I'm here sincerely trying to get you to understand the difference. Don't try to bring up everyone because their feet were already held to the fire. It's your turn. Answer what you can. Take a few weeks off of YouTube if it's really hurting your job, if it's really hurting your marriage. Truly do that. Because I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter how short spurts you're getting to, people are still going to be angry. People are still going to come at you. It's going to happen when you have a thousand people in your life, in your lives, excuse me, that you present on YouTube. It's just naturally going to happen. You're not going to be able to breathe for a little while. But my suggestion is take it, answer questions like Wendy did, and breathe through it. That's my suggestion, guy. Or bam. <laughs> Sorry. If you are a new subscriber or a returning subscriber, thank you very much for... Uh, checking out this video if you've lasted this long and you have not hit the subscribe button please do so right now consider doing such if you have um, uh, if you haven't all like if you have not already liked this video please consider liking the video and if you haven't uh, hit the notification bell consider hitting the notification bell because all three of those things help the channel out all three of those things help me broaden my wings out there so that way I can hit my goal of a thousand subs. So that way the YouTube algorithm will just broaden the cascade my channel out there. I'm still going to be doing this no matter how long it takes. Um, I don't have any grand scheme ideas. I do know that I just want to reach more people. And I do know that getting a thousand subscribers and getting a community post or a community post tab on YouTube is important to me and I want to be able to do such wonderful things. So thank you very much. 
Um, I always end my videos by saying, I know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And because I know he did that, it had to have been an overwhelming love that he did that for and with. And I want to be able to take some of that love and say that I can love each and every single one of you, regardless of your sins, regardless of your faith, regardless if you and I like each other or not. I'm still going to love you. There is a difference. You can like someone. You can love someone even if you don't like their actions, right? Um, not liking someone or not or having to say something about their sin or whatever... That's God's mess to deal with, not mine. I'm here to just love you. I don't have time or the struggle or the need to work to worry about your sin or your lack of like for me. Right? I'm here just to love on you. And with that, I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day. I'm sorry, I'm using my mouse here. Have a good day. Bye now. Bye. Bye.